Hello, friends. Valer has expanded its arsenal by introducing the Mach 2 line, a wide body option that complements its original Mach 1 elongated paddles. It seems like we're seeing a trend in both the pro and amateur ranks for people switching from elongated to wider paddles that provide more control. To understand why this might be happening, let's take a look at how the Mach 2 paddles perform and what are some of the pros and cons compared to elongated paddles. For this video, I'm only reviewing the Mach 2 Forza, which is their thermoform variety. There's also a regular Mach 2 option, which is a cold layered paddle that doesn't have the unibody thermoform technology. The Mach 2 Forza costs $180 and you can take 10% off that with the discount code John Q. It comes in two thicknesses, a standard 16 millimeter and a thinner 14 millimeter. These paddles have a wide body shape with a rounded top and a long handle. In this way, they have a similar shape to the Yola Solaire, but the Mach 2s are slightly shorter and wider, coming in at just under 16 inches long and just over 8 inches wide, putting these paddles into the wide body category. Also, the handle is longer than usual for wide body paddles at 5.5 inches long. The swing weight of the 16 millimeter version is 113 and the 14 millimeter swing weight is 108. These fall at only the 38th and 20th percentiles in my database, and both of these will feel light and quick in the hands when swinging, which translates into good maneuverability. At these swing weights, the 16 millimeter Mach 2 Forza will feel the same as the Bread and Butter Loco, 60 Double Black Diamond, and Yola Scorpius Colin Johns. The 14 millimeter version will feel like the Electra Model E Stealth, Selkirk Power Air Invicta, and the 60 Double Black Diamond Infinity. The 16 millimeter Mach 2 Forza's twist weight is 7.3, which is very high and falls at the 99th percentile. Twist weight correlates with the width of the sweet spot from side to side on the paddle, and this seems about right to me. I thought the sweet spot felt excellent. And the 14 millimeter version has a twist weight of 6.8, falling at the 82nd percentile. This is also an excellent measurement, and the 14 millimeter version likewise has a great sweet spot, but I did notice it twisting in the hand slightly more than the 16 millimeter version during off-center shots. Regardless, both of these paddles are gonna have a larger sweet spot than most of the paddles on the market. All of the Forza paddles are thermoformed, including the Mach 2, so you'll get the benefits of thermoforming, which includes more power and pop, greater durability against handle breakage due to the welded perimeter carbon fiber seam, and a more solid, stiffer feel overall. The Mach 2 Forza paddles use raw carbon fiber for the facing materials, and the grit on these paddles does not disappoint. If you watched my best of 2023 video series, you know that the Mach 1 Forza came in first for the best spin category. The Mach 2 Forza paddles use the same gritty, coarse peel ply texture, and they both get in the upper range of the top tier category for spin. My spin tests for the 16 millimeter paddle averaged a ridiculous 2330 RPM and the 14 millimeter wasn't far behind at 2236 RPM. So these paddles have some of the best spin that money can buy. My average serve speed as measured with a radar gun came in at 54.7 miles per hour for the 16 millimeter paddle and 54.0 miles per hour for the 14 millimeter version. These results put the 16 millimeter Mach 2 at the 54th percentile and the 14 millimeter falls at the 39th percentile. Pop as measured with punch volley speed falls at the 28th percentile for the 16 millimeter version and the 80th percentile for the 14 millimeter version. This is a pretty huge difference and the 14 millimeter paddle probably gets such better pop due to several factors, such as the lighter swing weight that allows you to speed up the paddle quicker with shorter swing paths and the thinner core, which makes it stiffer and more responsive than the 16 millimeter version. So what this all means is that the 16 millimeter version gives you more power from the baseline on shots with a full swing like serves and drives, but it provides much less velocity on shots with shorter swing paths like punch volleys, counters, and flicks. The 14 millimeter paddle, on the other hand, gives you less power with full swings, but a whole bunch more pop with shorter swings. So the 16 millimeter version suits people who like to grind out long points of the kitchen and who prefer to play the finesse game and reset shots back into the kitchen rather than speeding up balls at every chance. 
And the 14 millimeter version is for people who like to play more aggressively and speed up balls when they can. That being said, I'd still classify both of these paddles as control paddles, as I'll talk about more later in this video. I've been playing with elongated paddles for a good while now, and I only recently switched over to a hybrid shaped paddle as my primary. So that's the Ruby from 6.0. So the Mach 2 Forza paddles are quite a bit different than what I'm used to. The biggest differences I noticed right away were the lighter swing weight, less reach, wider sweet spot, and all around good control. The wider body of the Mach 2 Forza is very forgiving for off-center shots, but it comes at the expense of reach. I did shank a few balls with these paddles at first when really stretching to get the ball, uh, which probably would have come off cleaner with an elongated paddle. But after playing with these paddles for a while, I was able to make the adjustments needed and didn't go for as many shots that required a full stretch. In terms of the reach potential of these paddles, it's not just the actual dimensions of the paddle that matter here, but also the location of the sweet spot, which is lower on the Mach 2 paddles than hybrid or elongated paddles. Another thing you'll notice with these paddles is that despite the large sweet spot and high twist weight values, just like every other paddle, there are dead spots near the edge guard on the sides. This whole edge to edge sweet spot is definitely a myth. To Valer's credit, they're not making this claim, but I've definitely seen other brands doing so. That being said, the wider sweet spot on the Mach 2 paddles, in my experience, results in fewer unforced errors compared to other paddles, especially elongated ones. Even though these paddles are much different than what I'm used to, I did really have a lot of fun playing with them. After I got a better appreciation of their strengths and trade-offs, I was able to shift to a more control-oriented playstyle, and my consistency was much improved on shots like resets, drops, and dinks compared to what I'm used to with power paddles. Comparing the 16mm and 14mm versions of the Mach 2 Forza, the 16mm version is the true control version. It has a softer, more plush feel, it's more forgiving on off-center shots, and it's the most consistent during the soft game and during resets. This paddle gave me a sense of confidence when I was resetting the ball from the transition zone and during dink exchanges at the kitchen. I was able to just trust the paddle and I knew that if I dinked the ball into the net or popped it up, that it was entirely my fault and not the paddles. I actually found that kind of clarity to be refreshing because there's a tendency to stare at your paddle when you make a mistake with a power paddle, like, man, this thing is so hard to control. But knowing that the control doesn't get much better in a paddle allowed me to identify what I was doing wrong and improve my technique rather than just blaming the paddle. Also, the power is there with the 16 millimeter version with full swings, but I wouldn't say that this is the paddle's strength. Hard serves felt good and drives from the baseline came off the paddle about like what I expected, not super fast and not too slow. The 14 millimeter version gives you a few more offensive options at the kitchen. Although the power isn't huge with full swings like serves and drives from the baseline, the pop on this paddle is top tier. So speed ups at the kitchen are very effective. Counterattacks are probably the biggest strength of the 14 millimeter version. Because it has such good maneuverability due to its low swing weight and because balls come off hot with short strokes, I could effectively counter speed up to the kitchen. Knowing that the hand speed and pop were there allowed me to relax a bit, trusting that I could react quickly to attacks and good things happen when you're focused and relaxed. Of the two paddles, the 14 millimeter version has the best hand speed and maneuverability, but the 16 millimeter is no slouch here either. So responding to speed ups was noticeably easier with both Mach 2 Forzas than with elongated paddles. The sweet spot is a little smaller on the 14 millimeter compared to the 16 millimeter paddle, but it's still very good. But again, you will get some twisting from off-center shots, even with the large twist weight. I think this is a misperception about paddles with really large twist weights that they somehow don't twist in your hands. It is true that you can hit it further from the center and it'll twist less, but if you hit it near the edge, it'll twist just as much as paddles with smaller twist weights. It's just that there's more real estate on wide body paddles horizontally, so there's more margin for error. 
That being said, the wider twist weight on both of the Mach 2 varieties helps reduce unforced errors, which makes these excellent choices for control paddles. I do think the 14 millimeter version plays better with just a little bit of lead tape. I added three grams to each side at the four and eight o'clock positions, which gave the paddle a bit more power and added some side to side stability during off center shots without sacrificing too much in terms of swing weight or hand speed. Just adding this little bit of weight to the edges, so less than a quarter ounce, increased the twist weight up to 7.5 from 6.8, while only increasing the swing weight two points from 108 to 110. So you're getting a notable jump in sweet spot and stability with negligible effects to hand speed. To my taste, the 16 millimeter doesn't need lead tape. I liked the balance of power, pop, sweet spot, and hand speed on the 16 millimeter paddle, so I didn't feel the need to experiment with lead. The Mach 2 Forza also has great spin, which helps with control. The dip on the ball with top spin was very noticeable. As I mentioned before, the 16 millimeter version got slightly better spin than the 14 millimeter version, which is opposite of what I usually see. Thinner paddles normally get better spin. Although this difference wasn't much, it was noticeable to me during gameplay, and I was able to swing more freely on serves and drives with the 16 millimeter version, trusting that the spin would keep the ball from flying long. But I don't think that this better spin on the 16 millimeter version will be seen across the whole Mach 2 paddle line. I have a feeling that it was just a slightly grittier paddle due to some anomaly in the peel ply curing process on these two particular paddles. But again, both paddles have top tier spin and this really helps with the control game. I also really enjoy the longer handles on the Mach 2 Forces. By and large, wide body or standard paddles have used shorter handles around five inches or slightly longer, but the five and a half inch handle on the Mach 2 not only allows for a two-handed backhand, but also gives the paddles more power potential by providing more leverage. There's also more power potential in these paddles due to the thermoforming process. I think that'll be appealing to people coming from power paddles because you get most of the control perks with the Mach 2 Forzas, but with the added power potential compared to previous generation control paddles. I had a lot of fun playing with the Mach 2 Forzas and hats off to Volaire for expanding their pedal line to include an innovative new shape that performs very well in the control category while also having enough power potential to make this a viable option for people looking to transition from a power to a control paddle. As I mentioned in my best of 2023 video, I think that the pendulum will swing from power to control in 2024, and people who've been using elongated paddles for years might come around to standard or wide body paddles. If the Mach 2 Forza sounds like it's for you, you can take 10% off the price, bringing the total down to $162 by using the code JohnQ at checkout. Valaire also throws in a few extras such as a neoprene paddle cover, which protects that raw carbon fiber surface from getting banged up in your bag. Also, there's a paddle eraser, replacement neck band and overgrip, as well as a sticker. Another thing I like about Valaire is their generous return policy. They have a 30 day, no questions asked return policy and a 90 day warranty against manufacturer defects. All right, that's it for now. If you did make it this far in the video, you probably found it useful. So please hit those like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, I started a website and I put all of the paddle metrics that I cover in these reviews on a database with over a hundred paddles that you can sort and search. There's also a ball database that compares hardness, rebound, and other metrics for most of the major ball brands out there. And you can subscribe to my newsletter to get early access information and some behind the scenes stuff. You can check all of that out at johnqpickleball.com.